Welcome to the Chronicle YouTube channel. I'm Buster Brown. And man, listen, I am blessed to be hanging out with Tony Berg, man. What's up, TB? I'm blessed to be hanging out with you. Guys. Man, <laughs> yeah. I just don't know. Yeah, man, how you feeling? I'm feeling great today, man. It's been a great day. It's always yeah. a great day. It's Sunday. I've had the opportunity to yeah. tell my story. And so that's what it's all about. Man, you, uh, you a great example of you don't look like what you've been through. You know, that's what people don't really understand. They don't really understand that people go through stuff and you don't have to look like right. what you go through. Right. You know. And you, you don't have to accept it. You, you know, you don't have to no, accept man, it. You, you can be anything you want to be. Right. You could be where you want to be, be how you want to be. Right. You know, you don't know my story because I don't have to tell my story. Right. So you don't have to know the misery and the things that I go through. I don't have to carry that on my own, on right. myself. Right. You know, I just have to be out here to be an example for somebody else. And you're a great example, man. Uh, Thank let's you. jump into this part real quick. Uh, you were 650 pounds. 650 pounds, yes. And I know when I first heard about your story, I was like, I got to interview this brother. Because look at you. I mean, look, we're, we're the same size, partner. I'm 240 pounds. Today. That's crazy. So you're looking at 400 pounds you lost. Yes, 400 pounds. 400 pounds, and two people. You, yes, yeah, two people, three in some cases, some cases right? Yes. You know, Floyd Mayweather, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. yeah if you're a middleweight, um, man, when I heard about your story, uh, Tony, I was like, I gotta talk to this brother because there are so many people that that's their New Year's resolution, right. uh, that's the thing that's keeping them down, right. uh, that's the thing that's uh, making them feel hopeless, man, when people are overweight. Right. And it's the thing that's taken a lot of us out. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Obesity has taken a lot of us out. Um, you have people that's watching this right now, and I pray that you share this with others. Because there are people out there that don't believe they can do it. But they can. It's they like, I'm, I, I'm at this point. At this point, I'm, it's too difficult. At this point, I, I just quit. I give up. Um, let's Let's... First start to where, how does someone allow themselves to get to 650 pounds? Now, you were an athlete. I was an athlete. So you were, you know, at a size where you should have been at that time? Correct. Or was that even overweight? You were like, what, 350 pounds? I played around 350. Okay. Anywhere between 350 and 400 right. pounds, depending on that. When I played at the University of Tennessee at Martin, I was an right. offensive lineman. <laughs> and so it was, it, it was, uh, acceptable to be that big right right but as I, as everyone always said even though i was that big they didn't realize <laughs> i was that big right but it had its advantages when you're playing on the offense yeah 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 you know when you're trying to protect that quarterback when you're trying to protect that quarterback <laughs> when you're trying to make sure your team's going to win when you, you you're out there trying to do the things that are necessary right so that you can win a football game so that, yeah. that's it became me right in high school believe it or not I was 337 pounds. I was wow. considered a, a bookend. You know, me and my high school college, uh, my high school mate right. actually <laughs> ended up being my college mate. We played high school ball together, and then we went off to Tennessee together. Played he college was, ball. How cool yeah. was that? Okay. Uh, college ball was great. Yeah. College ball was yeah. great. I mean, I had an opportunity to get a scholarship. Um, I went in on a partial scholarship, believe it or not, coming out of uh, Richmond, Virginia. I played in Holland Springs High School. Right. I got an opportunity to go to the University of Tennessee. I went in with a partial scholarship during my freshman year. By the end of my freshman year, I gained a full scholarship. Because where I came from, I didn't have the opportunities to go to college. Right. My parents all had elementary school education. And that's it. And so they embedded in us that you had to do something different mm. so that you can get to that mm -hmm. next stage. Right. And my thing was, okay, academically, I wasn't bad off. Don't get me wrong. Right, right. But I knew that that may not be the thing that could get me to college. Where you need to go. So right. I played football. So played I played football. That. And uh, that that 300 plus worked for you. It worked yes. to your advantage. It worked to my advantage. Then uh, you left college, got here. Right. I moved here in 1989 right. after I graduated. But let's kind University of backtrack. So when you're in school, you can exercise and kind of Correct. maintain Correct. a 340, 350. Right. A healthy, a healthy 340, 340 350. Because we had to right. work out. We right. had to do all of the maintenance right. things. We had to lift weights. Right. I had played sports all right. the time I was there. 
So it was easy eating to habits, maintain it. My eating habits was conducive to playing football. Right. Let's just say it that way. And then your coach is going to make sure right. that your coach said, is going to make sure right. that you exercise and that right. you do all of the things that are necessary so that you can carry it that weight in a positive manner. Right. right. Now, right. fast forwarding, as you would say, in 89, when I graduated from school, guess what? I kept those same habits. Mm -hmm. Now, moving here and keeping those same habits as far as eating, but not exercising. Wow. That's where I lost it. Mm. That's how I got to that point of being 650 pounds. I continued the same habits that I had when I was in college, but I wasn't exercising right. anymore. Right. So the weight started to picking up real fast. Wow, but 300 pounds you picked up. How does, I mean, how did that happen? A combination of things. What, do you, what, I mean, what were you eating? <laughs> Tell me that. You, you were, really weren't eating anything. Right. Different. The problem was that right. you weren't exercising. Exercising. You really weren't right. exercising. You were still enjoying food. Right. I love to cook. Even today, right. I love to cook. So I cooked. I ate. People would come to my house to eat. We'd eat even more. <laughs> you know, but I wasn't exercising. I wasn't right. doing anything with that. And so it became uh, to a point that it became a crutch for me. And so, you know, food became that thing, that comfort thing for me. Mm. And so I continued to eat because I enjoyed it. I enjoyed cooking. And you didn't see the weight coming on? No, no. Let me tell you, you know, a nickname I had back in those right. days when I was 650 pounds, <laughs> believe it or not, was called Big Sexy. Big Sexy. Big Sexy. Wow. A friend of mine named me that. And the reason for that name was the fact that I was big. And, you know, and I was really big, 650 That's pounds. big, but you had personality. But I had personality right. and the fact that I had my clothes made because I couldn't buy clothes. Wow. How many people you know can yeah, buy clothes? Exactly. And so right. I dressed then the same way I dress now, but my clothes were being tailor-made for me because I couldn't buy them out of a regular store. Right. And that's interesting how your friends that, was surround, that you surrounded you, out of endearment, they kind of glamorized yeah. 650 pounds. Right. So you almost kind of felt comfortable. I was very that. comfortable. Right, with it. right. I didn't have an issue with it. Right. I was mobile. Right. There came to a point where it became an issue, and we can talk about that. Right, and that's but what I want to go. I was, yeah. I was comfortable with being 650 pounds. Right. I enjoyed it. My mm. friends enjoyed it. I was teaching school. I was working with kids. I was working with adults and adjudicated kids. And, you know, and so it, it was natural. When you saw me, they called me Big Tony. Big Tony, so what about your uh, romantic life, if you, if you don't mind me asking? It, it didn't affect that at all. It really didn't. That's oh, how wow. I got that name, Big Sexy. Big Sexy. <laughs> I'm just being honest. You know, because, again, I, I love it, dude. One, one of the ideas was, and what people don't understand is, if you're comfortable with you, mm. and you make yourself, if you're comfortable with you, then everybody else around you becomes comfortable right, with you. Right. You know, I was married then at that time. And wow. so I was, everyone was comfortable with me being Big Tony. But what I realized was right. that that wasn't the best thing for me. For you. For me. Exactly. And that, I tell you that that's interesting for anyone that's a certain size right. that they're just going to be. Because right. some people just naturally thicker than others. Correct. And your story back then is, uh, is in inspirational, man. It's like, yo, this is who I was. Right. Okay. And I embraced it. I embrace and because it. I embrace it, those around me embrace it as well. And Because uh, I didn't allow right. that to limit me, right. to be honest with right. you. I, I did things to accent the fact that I was big. Right. I couldn't ride in a regular size car. Right. Back then, the right. excursion. Remember the Ford yeah, excursion? I remember the Ford excursion. The Ford excursion was the big vehicle. Right. Well, guess mm -hmm. what? I had two of those jokers. Mm. Because I needed them. Right. Because I couldn't really get in a regular Any car thing, right, comfortable. Right. right. So I made sure I had everything I needed right, to be right. able to live the lifestyle right. that I was living at that time. Right. And somebody who's not able to afford, you know, an excursion, that's not right. a cheap ride. And it costs gas money. Right. Big time. It's gas just like money. clothes. They were they were right. I was able to afford getting those clothes right. tailored to meet my right. size. Right. So but for somebody who is not in that position, the main thing here is to embrace who you are. Embrace who you are. Don't Stop living no, your life. Don't stop, don't living. stop living. Don't, don't stop, stop loving don't stop your living. life and loving who you are. Um, how can someone do that? Because that's easier said than done, Tony. What do you say to someone? Because well, that's easier said than done. How do it, you not? 
it is. It's a challenge, to be honest with you. It's a real challenge to be able to be that big mm -hmm. and be confident that, about being that big. Right. And knowing that there were places I would go that people would look at me. There were restaurants. When I went to a buffet restaurant, right. you know, people <laughs> looked at me funny. Why right. in the world? <laughs> you know, that's how you got this way. Why are you here eating at right. my buffet? But that's how people looked at you. Right. You know the, the stigma that comes along with that. Right. But my attitude allowed me to get past that stigma. I didn't care what you thought about me. Mm. Because I knew whom I was. You were already covered before you walked right. out the door. Exactly. With love for Tony. With love for Tony. But not only mm. the fact of love for Tony, I knew God covered me. Right. He made me who mm. I was. Now, he also was the one that woke me up and told <laughs> me. It was time to make a change. It's time to make a change. It's exactly. time to make a change. Now let's talk about this. Let's let's um, backtrack just a little bit because I don't want to lose my train of thought on this no one. It's been hit, staying in my head. There are people that I'm a slim guy, right. right? And there are people that are thicker. There are people that are slim that are very uncomfortable with being so slim because right. it's like, oh, why do I have to be the one so skinny? Right. And then nobody thinks about guys like right. that. But let's go. To, let's let's talk about people who are who they are, right? Whether you're bigger or slimmer, uh, you were uh, 300 plus pounds, a healthy 300 plus pound. Correct. There are people that's going to be right in that area um, anyway. Right. What do you say to them about being a healthy um, 300 plus pounds if that's who they are right now? How can they become a healthy three? Well, the reality is, if you want to be healthy, you got to exercise. Right. I'm just going to be honest with okay. you. Regardless of how big you are, whether this is walking, whether that's running, mm -hmm. whether it's lifting weights, whatever it's got to be, right. you've got to be healthy with whatever it is that you have. Mm -hmm. Once once you take that on, mm -hmm. you have to own it. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. going to be honest with you because owning mm -hmm. your size is one of the things, depression is one of the things that I see a lot because I counsel also. Okay. I counsel people now that are quote unquote, we as society say are overweight. Overweight, yeah. And I try to advise them as best I can. But you have to realize that, that being overweight, there are certain things you can do. For instance, we push as a society all these quote unquote diets and all these diet sodas and mm -hmm. diet foods and all of those wonderful things. When in reality, if you really look at what's in those things, they are worse for you than eating regularly. <laughs> I'm going to just be honest mm -hmm. with you. When you start to look at the sugar level and all the things that are involved in that. So you have to do your own research and look at what's, what's out there and make sure that you're doing things. If you're going to be healthy at a, at a huge weight, then you're going to have to do the extra mile to make sure you, you got to put in work. You got to put you in that put work. In work, right? You know, and like I said, I started off putting in that work, right? But then I relaxed. You put in the work when you were playing football, right. when you were being supervised, right? Then you came here unsupervised, unsupervised on your own, on my own, and then boom. And, and again, right. the first couple of years it was fine. You know, when I came here in '89, it was okay. Mm -hmm. I picked up a little bit of weight. Yeah, you always do that when you stop playing any any sport. Right. Any athlete can tell you that. And so it was fine. And so I tried to maintain that. But then I got comfortable in my lifestyle. And I stopped exercising. Right. And that's when I really stopped. Then you can call Big Sexy to help. You stay comfortable. <laughs> but you know, you, you know, you found when all When people the... <laughs> make you feel good about who you are, right. and you feel good about who you are, yeah. and then you have to realize what you're really doing right. to yourself. What you're really doing to yourself. Um Tell me some of the inconveniences that came with being 650. When, when I got to that point, one of the things people don't know about what was happening with me, I had to get an epidural mm. every month so that I could continue to walk. Wow. Okay. So it was a task for me to walk at that point because I was putting so much strain on my leg and my mm. back and my spine. So I had to get an epidural. As you know, that's what women get when, when they get they're pregnant. Get, yeah, right, yeah. When they're pregnant and try to get birth. Yeah. I was getting one of those every month so that I can continue to walk. Mm, mm, mm. Walking from the front door to my car was a task. Wow. And I would have to stop. You know, and that's when I realized, okay, wait a minute. 
it's, it's, it's time for a change. This ain't sexy. Yeah, this ain't sexy at all. Yeah. I don't care what nobody else says. Yeah. You know, and yeah. even then. And you had to realize that for you. I had to realize that right, for me. Right. No one could tell me that because right. my doctors had been telling me the whole time, Tony, right. you need to lose some weight. Right. You know, you don't need to do this. You need to exercise. This is not good for you. You're going to end up with all of the things that come with being overweight, right. diabetes, high blood pressure, right. sugar, all the, all the things that could happen to you. He was telling me, if you don't get this together. And for years, I didn't listen. Mm -hmm. Now, knock on wood, most of those things didn't happen to me. The worst thing that happened to me was I have a high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. That's it. Now, how many lucky. People, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you, and you consider that lucky. That's, that's lucky. lucky. Right, right, you know, right, and, right. And, you know, but right. people don't realize what that overweightness can do to you. Right. They really just don't yeah, realize. that's serious. From, from... Here to your doorstep. From here to my doorstep. Wow. I used and to breathe hard. Wow. You know, I used to wake up in the middle of the night. I couldn't sleep laying flat. Mm. You know, because it put too much pressure on my lungs when I was laying flat. Right. So I had to sleep inclined or sleep setting up. I had to sleep with a CPAP machine mm. so that I could breathe. You can breathe. Because I'd actually literally stop breathing in my sleep. Because of all that weight. Because of all of that weight. Yeah. And the stress that it was putting on. Right. Me. It's serious, man. Yeah, it's real That's real serious. serious. Um, did that have anything to do with you uh, going blind in your left eye? Actually, no. Let me tell you. That started when I was young. Okay. That's, that's that totally That started separate. Okay. when I was young. And being misdiagnosed, believe, okay. believe it or not. Okay. Uh, in high school, um, because of the limits of my family mm -hmm. and the limits of the doctors that I had opportunities to visit, let's just say it that way. Right. I was never diagnosed with an issue that I had, mm. which was called keratoconus. Which keratoconus. Is, keratoconus, okay. which is something that's typically not seen in African Americans, just to be honest with you. But I had that disease at a younger age. I didn't realize I had that disease until I got to college. And my, um, I was my junior year in college. They diagnosed me with that when I had my first major episode of not being able to see. Wow. And so here I am in college. All my life, they've been prescribing prescriptions to me, um, increasing my uh, my glasses and all of those wonderful things so that I can continue <laughs> to see. I get to college at Tennessee and finally a doctor says, no, this is what your problem is. So I had to make wow. a choice in my junior <laughs> year. Do I play my next two years or do I stop now and have wow. surgery? Wow. And I chose the option, believe it or not, to play my next two years. Wow. I didn't have surgery until I moved mm. here in 1989. Mm. And I went over to Baptist and there was a specialist at Baptist that specialized in that. And that's a transplant you have to have. So believe it or not, that transplant had to... When you get a transplant, it's because someone donated something who passed. Oh, okay. So that's right, what I'm trying to explain. Right, gotcha. They donated wow. something so that you that passed so that you can continue to see. Right. And I had two of those surgeries. So I went blind not only in one eye, but in both. Because mm. you have. I have keratoconus in both of my eyes. Wow. And so I have donor material, uh, donor corneas in both of my eyes. In both of your eyes. And then two years ago, I had um, four retinal detachments in my left eye. Right. And because of that, I've lost all my vision in my in left your eye. left eye. Right. Wow. So I, today, I have no vision in my left eye. In that eye. left eye. Wow. None at all. Man, your story, your testimony is just amazing because of where you are today, what Correct. you accomplished today. Um, you're a beautiful spirit, man. And, and you're a guy, I'm not afraid to say, I you have a beautiful it. spirit, man. Um, it, 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 let's, let's, let's get back to the weight and then we'll also talk about okay. you know, the struggles you may have with being blind in your left eye. Um, so let's talk about how you dropped 400 pounds. Um, what was that, 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 I, I, I know, you know, going back and forth, the epidural, the machine in order to sleep, those are some inconveniences. People go through that on a regular basis. They're right. still not dropping the weight. Right. What was that thing that made you say, that this is it? Well, believe it or not, I was waking up in the middle of the night and there was so much pressure on my body because of the weight that my veins and my legs were popping. Mm -hmm. 
And so I would wake up in the middle of the night in a pool of blood. Wow. Because the pressure from all of the weight and all of the other things that were going on was popping veins within my body. Wow. And so at that point, I just realized that I needed to do something. So I went to my doctor and I wanted to live. I went to my doctor. My doctor said, look, I've been telling you this for years. I'm going to just be honest with you. He said, I've been telling you this for years. So what is it that you want to do? And, and, and he started talking to me about weight loss and, and dieting, and we went through all of that. And what was on your mind pills. when he was talking? Were you like, and, yeah, whatever? Yeah, right. What was on your mind? Was, it was a combination of things. Okay, I want to try this. Let's see if this is going to work. Um, you know, I'm not sure if it's going to work. Diet don't work for me. I've dieted before. You know, diets work good. You get lose the weight, but what reality is you gain it back. Mm-hmm. And when you gain it back, typically you gain back twice as much as you lost on right. a diet. Right. So that wasn't the thing for me. And so my doctor was saying, well, there's some extremes. He said, have you ever thought about the extremes? Have you ever thought about weight loss surgery? Mm. And I was like, no, I never really thought about it. Don't know anything about it. And he said, these are the options that are out there. He started talking to me about it. And so I went and visited certain clinics. And one of the clinics was in Duke. And, and, and they were saying, man, you're so big. We're not sure if we would even want to do you. Wow. Because the chances that you would live through the surgery were less than 50%. Wow. And so I went back to my doctor. And I was like, this is what they told me. He was like, well, I'm going to check around and find some other doctors. And I'm going to refer you to some other people. He ended up referring me to a local doctor that said, I will take the opportunity to work with you, but you have to do some things. So the first thing I had to do was I had to lose 50 pounds on my own without any diet pills, without any anything. Oh, naturally. Naturally. Because any other way would have... Any other way was nothing more than masking the actual gotcha. issue. Gotcha. Gotcha. I had to change my lifestyle. And that was a job in itself. You know, that means I had to cut back on what I was eating. I had to cut back on what I was doing. Had to. I had to. And, and my, my doctor and him said, if you don't, the alternative is you won't be here. Hmm. And, you know, I'm like, man. Now you got to just not think about how much you want to live, but how much you love those around you. Right. Because I had to think about let my them family. Down too. Yes. I had to think about my kids. I didn't think about all those things that are right. out there. And then also I had to evaluate the fact that you're already telling me I have less than a 50% chance of leaving. <laughs> and so can you imagine? That's serious, dude. You know, and so at that time, uh, I, I met with my doctor, Dr. Gonzalez. I don't mind saying his name. And Dr. Gonzalez told me, he said, these are the things that you got to do. He said, you got to change your habits of what you eat. And you've got to lose 50 pounds just to show me you're serious enough for me to even consider thinking doing about this. doing this. Wow. You know, you, there's a whole lot of TV shows out now. I don't know if you know my 600-pound life right. and this, that, and the right. other. And all of those things, people don't realize how true some of that is. Some of it's glamorized because it's the fact it's TV, and that's what, you know, reality TV is all right. about. But I went through this without reality TV. Mm-hmm. You know, this was what it is. This is real talk. This is real talk. Right. And so we went through that process. I went back to them, uh, went went back to him and and continuously the whole time during the two months where I was trying to lose this 50 pounds, I was going back and forth with him and trying to get it done. And his thing was, there's nothing I'm going to do for you. You've got to do Do this for yourself. And if you don't do this for yourself, then you're not going to be able to maintain after, even if you got the surgery, you wouldn't be able to maintain. If you don't have any discipline. Right. So the reality for people, people that do weight loss surgery don't realize that your stomach doesn't start off as big as it is. It starts off small. The stomach's a muscle. And so even though they can reduce your stomach so you can get that initial weight, mm-hmm. guess what? You can make your stomach grow again. Grow again. And in, in the profession, that's called eating your way back out. And so if you see... Mm-hmm. Someone, you say, oh, you lost all that weight. And then two, three years later, you look at them and go, you gained it all back. Wow. But you had that surgery. It's because they done literally ate their way out of that surgery. Wow. They grew their stomach back to the point wow. that it could maintain it because the stomach's a muscle. So what it comes down to, everything's about 
changing who you are. Changing who you are. A changing mental your lifestyle. lifestyle change. You got to change your you lifestyle. You got to change a me mental lifestyle change. What was? What are some of the things? Because for those who are out there watching, what are some of the moments you had where you felt like, man, I, I can't do this? What are some of the things that was on your mind? Were you depressed? Suicide? Were you ever? And how close were you to any of those type of thoughts? I was depressed. Yes. Okay. I never considered suicide. Okay. Because my thing was, and and is. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die anyway. Right. So why I'm going to kill myself? Right. <laughs> I'm killing myself by eating. Right. So I don't need to do anything else. Right. But the depression set in because you end up becoming comfortable with your eating habits. You become comfortable with your situation. And so you, you become depressed because you can't use that comfort anymore. Mm. And so I had to deal with that part of it. But Habit. You know, you, you, breaking that, that habit, habit. Breaking that wow. habit. Wow. And that will depress you. When you, and that will when depress you. Can't, you know, it, it, all you need to do is take two steps and you can't. Right. And you just can't. It's like, dude, two steps. Two steps. That's it. And you can't, and you and can't. You can't do it. And wow. you, you want to push away from the table, but wow. you know. And I did that because I put the pressure on myself where a lot of people have to use counseling and nothing's wrong with counseling. Right, right, right. Said that. There's nothing wrong with that. But my thing was, I needed to do this for Tony. For Tony. And if Tony needed to do that for Tony, then Tony needed to go through and figure out how Tony could get it done. Right. And that's how I got that. Wow. Done. Wow. That's that's good. Um, change your eating habits. Uh, you have to change your lifestyle. Change your lifestyle. Mindset. Mindset. Um, how important was the support around you? The support around you is, is really important, right. to be honest with you, right. because what, what you'll find out is, is if you don't have the support around you in the sense of um, when you say you want something and then, oh, oh, I'll give it to you anyway. You know, and I, I, I told the people around me at that time, I don't care what I say. Don't give in. Don't give in. Because if you give in, that gives me an opportunity to give in. Right. So I don't need you to give in. And if you can't not be that person to not give in for me, then I need you to move on too. Move on. You have to separate. That's why I, 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 I need to. I need to. You know, I need to separate myself for you. And I was fortunate. I had folk around me at that time. Right. People around me that said, "Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk this walk with you." Right. And I'm not gonna help you in the sense of. You want a honey bun, or you want this, or you want that, and you want this fried <laughs> honey chicken. Honey buns are dangerous, baby. Honey buns, fried chicken, you know, all the stuff that they say we love. <laughs> they're not going to provide that for you. And see, me being on the other side. That's that, real friendship. That's real support. And that's right. real love, isn't it? And it makes a big difference. It, uh, it and, really and does. When they say no. When they say no. And when everybody's around you like, no. Right. That helps. And that, that, helps, you, that helps a whole lot, Tony. That helps a whole lot. What did you do to lose that 50 pounds? How often did you uh, exercise? What kind of exercises did you do? What did you cut out of your diet and little things like that? Let me let me tell you about an amazing part. Okay. I really and I truly this was my lifesaver. I was a men, men, uh, a member of the Winston Lake Y. Okay, don't they, close it. <laughs> please don't close it. Yeah, please don't, don't close no. it. But I was a member of the Winston Lake Y, and I used to go and do water aerobics with the seniors. Mm. And most of the most of the people in the class were women, okay. Yeah. And because in the water, anybody that, that's of my size at that time you know you can move better in the water than you can move anywhere. Mm. And so I was doing water aerobics in the morning time. And those ladies, those seniors at the Winston Lake, if I didn't show up, mm. they blow up my telephone. Wow. And today I give them all my credit. Because they allowed me to participate in that class. Wow. They didn't care how I looked because I didn't look good in the water. I'm going to just be honest with you. <laughs> I was 650 pounds. Right, right. And I was in here with these seniors. And these ladies said, come on. If you're not here, they're going to call me. They're going to ask what happened, why you didn't show up. They were my inspiration, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, when mm -hmm. I was doing water aerobics. That's what's up. They continued. And even to the day when they see me, I give them credit <laughs> because they they were the ones that allowed me to interject myself into their class, right, right. and then they took ownership of me. Wow! 
There's that support team again. That was right? that support team There's again. There's that support team. And, and, and so that's why I started that. And I lost my weight doing water aerobics at Winston Lake Y. So it's true that water swimming works all of your muscles. All it of works muscles all of body. your muscles in your body. Wow. And when you're that big, it allows you to move better. Because at, at one point, when I really got to that point, I couldn't move it. As I told you, I was right. getting epidural. But when in the water, that water gave me that free flow. It didn't allow those things to function the same way. So I was exercising in the water. And I could exercise up. in the water for an hour <laughs> when I could exercise in the gym for five minutes. Right. But I could do an hour in the water. Wow. And, and you get all of your body. All of your body was moving. Wow. That that all of your body was moving. And that's how I lost my initial weight. Wow. What must you absolutely cut out of your diet? It's a must. Now or then? Then. Then I had to cut out fried food. Had to. I had to. That was that was my crutch. Everything I had was fried and greasy. And there was no no compromise in there that. There was no compromise. Right. And don't get right. me wrong, every blue moon I threw a little fried food in there. Right. Because one of the things my doctor told me, mm -hmm. he said, if you deny yourself anything that you really, really want, you'll realize that your body is going to fight opposite of you. Okay. 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 And so I rewarded myself. On Sundays, I could have fried chicken. Right, right. I couldn't have it any other time, though. Right. And I didn't do fried food. You modified that stuff. So modified. I modified it. I made go. those adjustments. Mm -hmm. But I, what I realized was I had to have the things that I wanted, I had to fit into my schedule, but they weren't everyday things anymore. It was a treat. Right. Desserts were gone. I stopped all desserts. Right. I barely do desserts now, if yeah. anybody knows me. I don't right. do a whole lot of desserts now. I don't do breads anymore, believe it or not. But breads was one of my biggest Because you're serious about then. this thing. I'm serious what about What about as far as juices and you know liquids? Juices and liquids, let me tell you, I, I, everything now I do. Okay. I can do a whole lot of, but you know, you, I still have to make sure I do my water. Right. Um, but because now I don't drink as much because when I drink a whole lot, I can't eat a whole lot. Okay. Because I, I try to make sure that I keep my stomach the size right. where it is. <laughs> right. right. I don't want it to expand. Right. You know, and, and, and I had my original surgery on April 24th of 2004. Wow. How okay. long did it take for you to get the 400 pounds off? The total 400 pounds probably came off, this is 28, probably 2017 when it was all gone. And you started when? I started 2004. So... I mean, it was all gone by 2018. I, and I progressed, wow. you know, to 2017. I progressed because I did it slowly and, and tried to maintain it. Right. One of the things I didn't want to do in, in losing that weight is to look like, you know, a lot of people when they get um, gastric bypass surgery, which is what I had, <laughs> right. they look like they got gastric bypass surgery. So they look ill and people go, what happened to you? Right. You know, why are you looking that way? And so, you know, I tried to manage how I did my weight loss. I didn't try to do it all at one time. I tried to manage it over a period okay. of time by exercising okay. and doing some things. Keeping energy. your body. I don't, I don't know. Thank you for telling yeah. me. That looking. But anyway, now is, 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 is a lot easier because I've actually gotten adjusted to the lifestyle. To the lifestyle. Mm. You know, I don't deny myself of anything now, even fried foods. If right. I want them, I know I can have them, but I only can have them in limits. Right. You know, I, I love fish. And so, you know, yesterday I fried me some fish and I had a couple pieces of right, fish. Right. And that's fine. <laughs> well, I might not eat any more fried food for the rest of the week. Gotcha. You know, so, you know, but it's anything good. anything that I want now, I get. Right. I just get it in moderation. In moderation, man. It's a, a, just a whole new lifestyle. It's a whole new lifestyle. Man, you looking good, brother. Thank you. Uh, and uh, continue to maintain. I'm in your corner. I appreciate uh, it. You know, because uh, I'm borderline. Uh, type 2 diabetes, okay. diabetic. Okay. So I have to have that lifestyle. Okay. And uh, the reason why I asked you about the support team mm -hmm. is there's so many people out there that say, when I'm trying to eat healthy, everyone else mm -hmm. around me, blah, blah, then they're not in your corner. Right. And that's just real talk, Tony. And so um, just, just remember that. That's what I want to hear. I wanted people to hear from someone that's been through right. what, what, what you've been through. Um, and it, yeah. Again, people don't realize, even with gastric bypass, especially with me being at the size that I was, when I had my surgery done at Forsyth Hospital, I was the biggest person ever done in Forsyth County. Wow. And like I told you, they gave me less than a 50% chance to right. live. Right. Okay. 
But I believed in my doctor. And the other doctors didn't want to do it. No, no one else wanted to do it. Right. Take my word for it. But Dr. I believed G, in my right. doctor. I believed in my medical doctor, Dr. Mark, and I believed in Dr. G. And I also believed in the real doctor. Right. You know, the ultimate doctor. God. You know, God. Because I, I said, he's not going to put anything more on me than I can bear. Right. Because whether we believe it or not, he allowed me to get to that point. Now, I made the decision to eat. He didn't make that decision. Right. But again, he didn't put any more on me to bear. Right. But he also gave me enough intelligence to say when the end was going to be. Right. Where, where I needed to make that decision. Right. Now, going through that process was not an easy process. Mm -mm, I can imagine. I passed several times on the table. I came out of that surgery, went into the intensive care, and they told my mother I wouldn't make it through the day. Mm. Okay. I and said, when you say pass, several times you they died lost on that table. me on that wow. table several times. Went into intensive care on the breathing machine. They told my mother I wouldn't make it through the night. Okay. And you knew the, uh, the the chances. I knew the chances the going in. Right, right, right. I knew the chances it's going chance, in. Man. My mom knew the chances right. going in. But my mom was a praying mom. I'm right. gonna just be honest with you. Right. You know, and, and my mom said to me before I went down, if it's your will. And I live by that today. Enough said right there, right? You know, if it's your will. <laughs> and, you know, I went into intensive care, stayed there three days on the breathing machine. On the fourth day, I said, I can't take it no more. I want it out. And if I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it. That was a decision that Tony made. Now, that's a serious faith walk. You faith know, lead. You know, what's interesting is that we say this all the time, Tony, that you take the first step and God will take he take two. Take two. And you cut the carbs. You cut the bread. You cut the fried food. You got the exercise in. You did. You took those. You took that step. Right. And God did the rest. And, and look at you now. And look at me now. You got to take that step. You got to put in the work if you're going to yeah. lose weight. There you go. You gotta, uh, and yeah. anything that you do, anything you got to put the life. work in. Absolutely. And you got to believe. Absolutely. If you don't believe that God is going to carry you to the next place, that he has a he has something in store mm -hmm. for you, you've got to put yourself in line so that you can get that. Yeah. That was in April 24, 2004. It's 20, what, 18? 18, dude. Yeah. That's 14 years later. Wow. I'm still here. Still here. Now, I've had some other trials and tribulations over those 14 years. But guess what? I'm still here. Right. And that's what allows me to say, okay, I know there's other things that he wants me to do. Right. And so I'm continuing in that path. I'm trying to make sure that I'm doing those things that he wants me to do. And man, I'm telling you, bless so many people. Um, and dealing with this weight loss, going through the, uh, the the surgery, and I'm sure that helped you get through all the other right. uh, uh, trials and tribulations Correct. you've gone to. Because you've gone through it. Because I'm, I'm sure you're thinking, if I got through this, I right. can get through this. I can get through this. I can get through this. And that's kind of what. Right. If I get through this, I, I right. get, I mean, if I got through this way, I can get through right. not and having my, this, this left and, eye. And let right. me tell you, when, when I lost my vision, well, right. I had four surgeries. Right. Each one of the surgeries were considered successful. Okay. And then a week later, I lost my vision again. And on the last time, that I had that surgery in my left eye because I had four retinal detachments back to back, which right. is uncommon. Never, not having a head injury, not being hit in the head, mm. not having anything that would typically cause a retinal detachment. That didn't happen to me, but I had four retinal detachments mm -hmm. in my left eye. And, and at the end of that, I was probably more depressed dealing with not being able to see than all the other things that I've already mm -hmm. been through. And I had to tell myself, I can make it through this. But that's 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 a real adjustment. I mean, people don't realize. Cover up your eye. Mm -hmm. Cover up your eye right quick. And just think about the fact oh, wow. that that's all you can see out of. Yeah. And then realize, on top of that. I, I'm, I'm feeling it right now. But let me tell you the other right, secret. Right. When I take my contact out my right eye, I can't see. So when you take that contact, you're blind? Yes. Wow. Legally. Legally. How did you get through that depression? Man? How did you get through this? Because you said that was one of the most... That was the hardest one for me. Toughest thing you've been through. How did you get through? Realizing that he's still 
not gonna give me any more Faith. than I can bear. Faith. I'm gonna just be honest with Faith. you. Because that was, I cried more when I lost my vision than I did you ever been than that all other process because I didn't know how to function. I have young kids. And the first thing I have to do in the morning time and the last thing I do at nighttime is take my contact out. And when I wake up in the morning, first thing I do is I put it in because I can't see. Right. I can't see the put function to move around my house. And you still have I to can't be deal with my children. I can't do anything. So when you get up in the morning, you have to still be dad. Yes, I do. When you get off work, you have to still be husband. Um, you know, and dealing with this blindness, you got through the weight. Then you have to deal with this, you know, you know, being able to see. Correct. Um, and you're thinking, when is it going to stop? I got over this hurdle, now this. But this was the toughest one of all. Right. And again, I believe that he's only going to put on me so much. Right. And he's going to not give me anything that I can't bear. Right. I may feel it in the human side of it. Right. But in the reality of it, I'm going to get through it. When you were going through your depression, because you say the blindness was the toughest, even right. tougher than losing the weight. Correct. Honestly, you really was like, I know I can get through this with God because he will not put on more than I can bear. You really bought into that. Sold out. My whole life has been based wow. on that, to be honest with you. You know what a testimony. You man. people don't realize that within you, right, deep down inside right. of you, in your soul, as I like to say, right. you can bring up some stuff right. that will help you get through anything. Right. It may not help you get through the people, but <laughs> it'll help you get through the situation. Gotcha. Because people you know, people will shame you. People will, will discount you. People will throw you to the wolves. People will just leave you. And then they'll hold you accountable to some mess. Right. You know, if they know you're trying to do better, sometimes right. it's like, yeah, but I thought you said you were going to say, hey, look, right. man. But God don't roll like but that. God don't roll like don't that. Roll like that. God says, I'm only going to put on you what I know, not what you know, not what your friends know, not what anybody else know, what I know you can bear. Right. And he puts it on you, and then he wants you to go out and be able to tell somebody right. that I only made this through this because yes, of him. God. Right. Wow. And uh, your your mom passed. My mom passed in who, 2010. Who, who was your rock? Who was my rock? And that made it tough, didn't it? That made it very tough. For right. Me. That made it very tough for me, but my wife stepped in. You know, my wife was there. She right. was with me. She was at all of the surgeries, along with a couple of my friends. I'm going to just be honest. Because I was going back and forth. I had four retinal detachments. Right. Every time I turned around, I seemed like I was in surgery. I had to have friends come because I <coughs> couldn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. I was homebound. I was uh, sleeping in a, a special chair mm. that had my face down. You know, my neighbors would come by and check on me because I couldn't do anything. I couldn't mm. set up straight for a long period of time. Wow. And so, you know, my wife was working <coughs> and coming Excuse home me. and cooking and taking care of me and 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 being there for me. So she didn't mind being your rock when mom passed away. Wow. She is, she is my rock. And you humbled yourself to yeah. allow her to be that rock. And have a, you That's know, serious. You, you have to realize that you <clears> have <throat> to get your strength from where your strength is. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, she's a God-fearing woman. And so she right. was there for me. And she is the one that allowed me to be me. Because the world would have laughed at me. Mm -hmm. But she realized right. that I had to go through what I had to go through. <clears throat> Excuse me, dude. No problem. I understand. And your kids, um, I, you were saying off camera that they wouldn't even notice the difference. They, they, they were, you were just dad. I'm to just them. dad to them. You right. Know? They was wondering. Mm -hmm. you know, my, my 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 son, my, <laughs> my two year old, soon to be. Well, actually, my three year old, soon to be four would ask me why I was sleeping in this machine because I told you I had right. to sleep in a special machine <laughs> right. that we had downstairs right. because I couldn't even go up and down the steps. Right. And then once when, you know, once the family left during the daytime, I was downstairs. And I had to spend the majority of my time face down in this machine mm -hmm. sleeping. So he wanted to know why. He wanted to know why. Mm -hmm. What was that all about? Mm -hmm. Wow. But you know, we just explained. And when it's time it to make breakfast, when it's time said, to make breakfast, let me like, do what I need to do. I, uh, and I'm on my way down. I, I, I gotta first I gotta put my contacts in. <laughs> Daddy, you go put your contacts in. Yeah. I'm gonna come watch you. He watches me put my contact in. Wow. And he knows once I get that in, is <laughs> everything's okay. 
But he does not realize that I can't see out of my left eye at right. all. And once I take that contact out my right eye, he doesn't, he doesn't realize that. that I can't function. Right. Love is more powerful. Love is all. Awesome. And, 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 and love is the best vision you can have. So, that is. so that's what's guiding him. Right. That's it. And, and that's what's guiding you as right. a father with him, that love. Right. So that's why he doesn't know you can't you know, physically it, it, see, right. but spiritually. Spiritually, you he knows him. I'm there. I'm, I'm going to be here with that's him. That's it. I'm going to do whatever I can. That's what's up. Um, I have to ask you this. I love the church I go to, mm -hmm. um, uh, the refuge in Greensboro. Okay. Uh, Hawkins is an awesome brother. Okay. Young dude, and I don't mind serving under him. Okay. 32, I'm 55. All right. Um, but you have to have a church that's outstanding for you to have the faith you have. What church? I took Galilee Missionary Baptist Scoven. Church with Dr. Scoville. Wow. Dr. Scoville. He's a good dude, too. He I know Scoville. He is a good dude. Yeah. I give him a hard time because he's younger than me, too. Right. <laughs> But he is so open and yeah. so willing and so reachable. Right. What I love about him is the fact that I, I have him on speed dial on my phone. Right, wow. And he knows if I call him, I'm not just calling him just, just to be, be calling him. Right. You know, and he knows even if he can't answer, I'm guaranteed he's going to call me back. A phone call. He's going to call me back and find out what's going on. That's what's up. And I tell you, man, uh, you're a great example of the leadership there because a church member should represent their church well with their walk. Right. Not this, right. with their walk. And another person that goes to Galilee is the editor for the Chronicle, which is Donna right. Rogers. Donna Rogers. Yeah. Right and she's yeah. another great example of the leadership at Galilee. And Tony, thank you so much, man. Thank you. Man, keep doing what you do. You. Tell me a little bit before we go about mud pies. You work with kids now. I've always worked with kids. But, but this now. is, you're the CEO this, of the Mud CEO Pies. I'm the CEO of Mud Pies. Right. Well, Tell me about Mud Pies. We specialize in birth through five. Okay. And then we do before and after school up to age 12. Right. Um, we're, uh, the, the organization's been around since 1970. Right. I've been there for the last 12 years. And, you know, we just built a new building uh, back in 14 on the corner of 7th and Patterson. Okay. It's the most state-of-the-art child care facility <laughs> um, in the state. Um, mm -hmm. We work with um, children from all ages. Like I said, we do offer the NC Pre-K program. Right. And one of the things that, that one of our cores is being able to provide services to the whole masses. And so we go out and we seek funding so we can provide scholarship to children that can't typically afford mm -hmm. to go to early childhood programs. Oh, that's what's up, man. So, I love the name Mud Pies because, boy, you know, when we're kids. That's it. Mud we love some Mud Pies. Then we, we're not crazy. Eat them and eat them and eat <laughs> that is the cutest little name, man. You guys keep doing the good work and we keep will. doing what you're doing with the kids and and, and your ministry. And and uh, I wish you uh, Godspeed on anything else that you're doing, TV. I appreciate you're good you. Tony Burton, folks. I right. appreciate you, man. Thanks a lot. Yes, sir.